Across Northern Australia, Aboriginal country is under threat. Weeds have moved into areas where they've never been seen before and becoming a huge problem. Landowners are worried and many are doing something about it. In some areas, CSIRO scientists are working with these landowners to learn their views on weeds, how to manage them and ways to improve their country. With groups like the Nawagi and Wick people in Queensland, the Malak Malak and Yulungu in the top end and the Western Arunda in the centre. Hermansburg sits on the Fink River, 140 kilometres west of Alice Springs. It's the oldest mission community in the Northern Territory. For the Western Arunda, their paradise is said to be growing empty and quiet. Weaves are on the march. We didn't see these grasses before. It was bare. And the uh, grass is just normal grass, not the cush grass or the um, buffalo grass. All these have spread. I was taught about the river and I was taught by old people what I can find food in this river, like fish, irbunga we call it, janma for yabbies. But here in the, in the, uh, in the community, near community, Hermansburg, Dari, we have a lot of our areas where a lot of our bush tucker grows is covered with bubble grass. It's hard to look around for a bush tucker nowadays because all these plants just like a bush fire, you know? And it's hard for us to show them for our kids what's there. Because all these other plants are taking over. Of all the introduced weeds in Central Australia, buffalo is causing the biggest problem. It might look pretty, but its story isn't. It's pushed out some bush foods already, while other food and medicine plants are under threat. This unwelcome stranger is blocking access to country, sacred sites and taking over hunting areas. The last few years has seen a lot of rain and fire. This has caused buffalo to spread dramatically. It's been along water courses for a long time, but now it's marching up valleys and hillsides. In the 1960s and 70s, cattlemen and government officers introduced buffalo as a pasture grass and to help control dust and erosion, but now it's causing devastating changes to country. In 2005, a ranger group was established by Central Land Council and traditional owners to create jobs around fire management, feral animal and weed control. Today, the Jawampa Rangers consist of 29 Western Arunda men and women who work with the guidance of senior traditional owners. Three male work crews are employed five days a week and a women's ranger group is getting underway. Their territory takes in nearly 4,000 square kilometres of the Aboriginal land trusts around Hermansburg, country Damien Williams calls home. Yeah, I love being a ranger. Uh, so I pretty much do what parks and wildlife rangers do, but on Aboriginal lands. Well, you know, Aboriginal people have always been uh, sort of rangers anyways. Um, lighting fires to regenerate places and uh, keep everything clean and stuff like that. Always taking a little bit, not too much. Um, so um, all the food's sustainable and making sure all the water holes are clean, don't get dirty and that kind of stuff. The rangers go on regular patrols on the lookout for weeds. With the uh, Athelpine, the program that we're running with that, there was a lot of it running down the Fink River from Glen Helen Gorge all the way down to Henbury Station which is a long way from Hammersburg so we had to go along the creek and we managed to get so much athapine out of the creeks 
that it seemed that yeah that was a battle that we could win so it was yeah pretty satisfying to know that we've uh, really got a control over a weed that's pretty dangerous. Weeds targeted by the rangers include the highly toxic Mexican poppy which is popping up around places where people like to go camping and fishing. The castor oil plant is also a toxic weed. Well, I think all the ranger programs uh, give a great opportunity for community people and um, locals to get back to country um, on their own homelands, uh, to get some new skills, learn and work with different people all over the place and just gives them a sense of worth and being able to look after their own country, which, yeah, which is something very important to uh, Indigenous people. For the Yarrinder, the spread of buffalo grass has had a disastrous effect on native animals and food sources like parenti, bush turkey, kangaroo and smaller bush foods like honey ants and witchetty grubs. To the north of Hermansburg, Peter Brabon is taking care of a small colony of slater skinks on his family's country. Lizards that are now rare and endangered. Call them slater skinks. Buffalo grass are blocking the little the hill that they can't even see properly, and might be a snake or something coming really close from the buffalo grass. They must be blocking the way. They should have a little open space to look around for their feet in that. There he is. I can see his little head. Little head. Take it out. That's the little lizard in there. He don't walk around everywhere. He just, when the food comes closer, he just run and get it and go back to the bottle again. He got lucky. Every 100 meter square here, in this square, 100 meter square, there's a little lizard around here, that's why we just spray all the buffles in this area. Being the cool season, it's the right time for the rangers to burn some fire breaks around the community. Okay fellas, so what we're going to do, is we're going to put one group here to burn down between this track and the road. Just remember, safety all times, always watch your back. Okay, because you guys on that side, remember, you'll be walking with the fire on your back. Okay, so keep an eye on it. We're burning off now so that we get away from that hot temperatures and the big fires later in the year, the uncontrollable bushfires. So this is a prescribed burn as opposed to a wildfire. Uncontrolled fires in the hot season are a disaster to all native plants and animals. When it does get going, the flame from the buffalo grass basically gets up over my head, over the two metre mark. And the biggest problem with that is it puts it up into all your mulga trees, your mallee trees, your big gums, and most of your wildlife is in that two metre off the ground level. So with the buffalo grass, when it gets to, to ignite in the hot days, it basically cleans everything out. Buffalo fires are also killing trees, said to be hundreds of years old, like corkwoods and desert oaks. Once the country is burnt out, buffalo is quick to grow back and claim even more territory. I think it's going to take a long time and maybe a whole different way of practice to, um, to actually get the buffalo grass back to the point where it's a minority um, in an environment where it should be a minority and not a majority. 
With many traditional food gathering areas now covered in buffalo, the rangers manage a small floodplain where families collect yalka or bush onions. A lot of weeds choke out local fruits and, and stuff that we used to eat. For example, in the creeks, that's where we had the bush onion, the yalka, as we say in West Nona. We spawned the rangers that burn all these grasses. And these grasses were the first one to grow. And the bubble grass. So yalka is still coming up just slowly. To gather yalka on that, the, the ladies used to go out and take the kids with them and gather and hunt for small animals and that kind of stuff. So it's sort of a, a bonding experience for the, for the children to learn their way and learn skills off the old people and a way for them to, you know, connect with the older people and it was just, yeah, magic. That's how it was and that's how it should be. Weeds are here to stay. Some can be removed and some are being controlled. The best way to manage weeds is to identify then control them early before they spread and become a huge and expensive problem. The CSIRO has learnt that Aboriginal landowners are deeply concerned about weeds on their country and the effects on bush foods, traditional knowledge and culture. They've seen Aboriginal people working to manage weeds for the well-being of future generations. Out there, the weeds already um, spreading up, like, for example, the mission grass and uh, coffee bush. The way in which we manage weeds is, is we integrate uh, traditional knowledge uh, with Western knowledge. It's hard to see weed just taking over. Uh, it's real good to work on your country. Make you feel good that you're doing something about it. Is it sad that we're losing a lot of our bush tucker. John Berengis, they are doing really, really good work. And uh, we keep up the good work. As a, a people, we need to heal. So I think a part of that is going back on country and being one with the country again and being fulfilled that, and, and look after what um, countless generations before us looked after and gives us that guidance and, uh, yeah, a sense of worth. Mm -hmm.